I think something that is crystal clear from the first episode of season 19 is that Cody Brown is not mentally well. I am obviously not qualified to make any kind of diagnosis, but I have consumed copious amounts of therapy in my day and mental health services over the years. And the cognitive dissonance displayed in just this first episode is actually alarming. For example, Cody says he suffers from FOMO, you know, fear of missing out with his family members. The family members that he hasn't made any effort to have a relationship with in years. Like, what? Cody's mental, emotional, and physical instability has led at least one of his kids to draw a hard boundary with him. In this first episode of season 19, we learn that Madison, Janelle and Cody's oldest daughter, has pretty much written Cody off, and that was mostly for the sake of her kids. When asked about this, Cody refused to answer any questions about Madison. We have a lot to talk about. Let's get into today's video. <laughs> Hey everyone, what's up? It's Sarah and welcome back to my channel. Before we jump into today's topic, let's hear from today's video sponsor. I am so excited to talk to you about the sponsor of today's video, AG1. AG1 is a science-driven formulation of vitamins, probiotics, and whole food source nutrients that aid your brain, gut, and your immune system. As you guys know, I have been on a weight loss journey since January, and since I'm utilizing the help of GLP-1 agonists, something that I have to consistently keep in mind is feeding my body the right nutrients that is going to keep my digestive system moving, and AG1 helps me immensely. Mmm. Delicious. AG1 has prebiotics, probiotics, and plant-based enzymes that help support digestion regularity and overall gut health. It also has a broad spectrum of micronutrients and phytonutrients that help keep your body nourished all day, every day. So head to my link in the description below to get a free one-year supply of AG, vitamin D3, and K2, plus you will get five AG1 travel packs with your first purchase of AG1. Thank you, AG1, for partnering with me and for sponsoring this video. This family loves to speak in therapy jargon, and I recognize a lot of buzzwords from my own experience in therapy. They love to talk about places and people as being safe or not safe for them. I actually just saw this dumb ass clip that TLC put out on their Instagram so we could get to know Robin better. No, it is my gig. It's really not. <laughs> I think the thing that I would tell my 20 year old self is stand up for yourself. It's okay to do that. One of the things that really describes me is my intention and effort to make sure people around me that are emotionally safe. I'm shy, I'm very cautious. I just try to be really cautious with people. So I guess something that people wouldn't know about me is I'm really not made for television. That's not my gig. Something that makes me happy is building Lego with my 12 year old son. One of the things that I say to my kids all the time, be the change you wish to see in the world. Uh, misunderstood. First of all, Literally, no one asked for this. TLC, read the room. My goodness. And honestly, Robin, something maybe you should have told your 30-year-old self is maybe don't be a homewrecker. When asked to use three words to describe herself, Robin completely ignores the requested line of questioning and instead tells us that she finds it really important to make sure people around her feel emotionally safe. Like, be so fucking for real right now? Are you kidding me? These promo snippets were filmed fairly recently, I'm pretty sure. So given all that has happened with this family in 2024, this answer is tone deaf at best. But I guess when you successfully run off your husband's 13 other kids and three other wives, you really don't have that many people that even want to be around you for you to worry about making sure they feel emotionally safe. But 
Do your kids feel safe? I would love to hear from these kids on that. The three oldest have always given off hostage vibes for me. So I would love to hear from Dayton, Aurora, and Brianna independently of the show on what their emotional state is. But anyways, Madison Brown, Cody, and Janelle's oldest daughter hasn't really appeared on the show very much since the family moved to Flagstaff and her own move to North Carolina. But her house has become a sort of jumping off, stop off for the younger brown siblings before they launch full force into adulthood. Madison's house has kind of become college. Right now, Savannah is living at Madison's. And last year, we watched Isabel leave Flagstaff to go live with Madison. I'm living with Maddie and Caleb and their two babies, Axel and Evie. And I think it'll be nice from going where my dad and mom didn't have that great of a relationship to somebody who has an incredible relationship. Isabel's gonna go live with a couple who is monogamous. Caleb's home all the time. Her parents' relationship hasn't been good for many years. So I think it could be healing. I think it could be good. I suppose this is lovely in a way because I am glad these siblings have each other. I'm very glad that Isabel does have an example of a stable monogamous couple to model what a healthy relationship looks like for her. But that is really her parents' responsibility, not her siblings. And I kind of feel like, as so often does with the Brown family kids, the older kids continue to absorb a lot of the parental responsibilities that were lacking from the actual parents. I know that Madison is an adult now, but she has her own children, and part of me feels like this is just more parentification of Madison. I don't know. You guys will just have to let me know your thoughts on that. In November of 2023, Madison went on a podcast called Somewhat Basic Podcast to give an update on her life. And on that podcast, she disclosed how much her relationship with her dad had deteriorated. And apologies, the audio quality of this clip is not the best. My mom is very involved in their life. Right. And so is Christine. And they make a lot of effort to be involved in their life. And my siblings who are involved in their life, they make an effort. And to me, I'm not going to make you make an effort. If you want to have an involvement in their life, you need to make the effort because they're amazing. And yeah. it is such an opportunity to be involved in their life. Yeah. It's, so a, really, like, it's a gift. It's a blessing. Yeah. Do they know who your dad is? Would they recognize They don't. Him? They don't. Um, and if you want me to cut that out, I can no. cut that out. No, that's fine. Um, they don't recognize him. Um, like I said, I if you want to make an effort with my kids, like – I am not going to hold the door for you as long as you're a healthy, sane person. Um, obviously, if you're not, I'm not going to let you. But um, I am not going to force you to have a relationship with them because, like we said, they are they are a gift and they are so amazing. Yeah, when I stop forcing that relationship or stop making that relationship happen or something happens and you're not there, I can't explain that to a six-year-old without their feeling is getting hurt, you know, and I don't, where there's heartache, like unnecessary heart or heartache, I'm not going to put that in like their life, you know? When Madison went on this podcast, we were in the midst of season 18 and we were seeing the kids that were appearing on the show discuss how much their relationship with Cody had changed over the last couple of years. It was right around this time that they aired that dinner at Garrison's house where Savannah, Garrison, Gabe, and Gwendolyn all discussed how they essentially felt abandoned by their father. And Garrison actually made the statement that Robin could have Cody. They didn't need a father figure anymore. Anymore. It was a difficult conversation to watch when it aired, and it is all the more heartbreaking given the events that would transpire mere months later. We knew Cody's relationship with Christine's kids wasn't great, and we knew that his relationship with Gabe, Garrison, and Savannah was really bad too. But I guess we didn't really know what the relationship was like with Janelle's other kids that didn't really appear on the show. So when Madison spoke out, it really gave us a look behind the scenes that this isn't just limited to the kids that are appearing on the show. 
none of these kids really have any interest in a relationship with Cody because they've just been burned too many times. I know that Maddie has not had any conversations with her dad. He's not called, she's not called him. He's pretty much written them both off. She doesn't really want him to have any contact unless he can commit to like a consistent presence. Let's talk about Maddie. I won't talk about her. You won't? Nope. I don't understand why Cody's not reaching out to Madison or some of the other kids. He should just be putting in the effort. Um, but I think the kids should be doing the same thing too. Not only did Isabel have surgery during the pandemic, but so did Madison's daughter, Evie K, who the K in her middle name at one point, I don't know if it still does, but at one point it's for Cody. Evie K was born with a congenital disorder that caused some limb deformities. So she ended up having to have one of her legs amputated when she was just a baby in order to ensure that she could have a quality of life that included mobility and walking. Cody wasn't there for Isabel or his granddaughter, who could have definitely used the emotional support. And even after all of that, Madison has gone on to have another child. And I don't even know if Cody has met his youngest granddaughter, Josie. And that's pathetic. I'm guessing Madison's podcast interview was the impetus for bringing her up in this episode. And Janelle tells us that Madison has set very clear boundaries with Cody and Robin, which has essentially led to her writing them off because Cody just can't commit to being consistent again. That is so pathetic. Having 18 kids is a choice that doesn't happen by accident. I, I'm not getting the big picture anymore because I'm not involved. Just the failure of the experience that was everything. Oh, my goals. Now failures happen and I'm gonna grow up and I'm gonna put on my big boy panties. I'm gonna get through this, you know that I am. Oh, but it was like the dream of Camelot. You know, it's like we had this dream and you know, a whisper might have blown it away, but, but we strengthened, we got strong and then it just fell to Failures happen. Cody talks about failing at parenting the way I talk about failing at diet. The cognitive dissonance is just unreal. No one and nothing is preventing him from having a relationship with his children. He loves to blame Mary, Janelle, and Christine, but really, this is an internal character failure. And the fake emotion, my gosh, just spare us. Get yourself a refund from the Robin School of Dramatics. But let's take a look at some of the other comments Cody made throughout episode one regarding the state of his family, his feelings towards his ex-wives, and the non-existent relationship he has with his other children. Ever since I suggested the one home thing, the one home idea, I realized that was probably a little selfish of me. I wonder if I would have never suggested that, if that wasn't just the catalyst. I don't fit in the family anymore. I've been excommunicated from my own family. I have this marriage and these kids with Robin, and then I have some relationship with some of the other kids, and it's infrequent. My kids still want to have a great relationship with their dad. I still want them to have a great relationship with their dad and with Robin, too. I've spent a lot of time hearing Christine and Janelle berate me in ways that have challenged my resolve for sort of love of myself. If they're trashing me to the public, I can't imagine what they're saying to my children, so it makes me very uncomfortable. Kids don't have a great relationship with Cody. That's why I wouldn't say it's a plural family. I would say that what Janelle and I have is a sister wife family. They know that I suffer from FOMO about my family. Fear of missing out, okay? So anything they can do that excludes me is a punishment to me. Does he actually think any of us are going to buy this? That he has FOMO? That Janelle and Christine have actually poisoned his kids by shit talking him? I've mentioned in a previous video that we know that that's not the case, but even if it were the case, it would be pretty hard for Christine and Janelle to sour his relationships with his kids if he actually had a relationship with his kids. If he was showing up to be a dad and another parent shit talked him, the kids would be like, no, that goes against what I know to be true about my relationship with my father. These are all really smart and emotionally intelligent kids. And as Janelle told us, I think it was either in season 17 or 18, 
these kids aren't sheeple. They wouldn't be able to be led to believe their father was one way if he was showing with his actions that he actually was a loving and active father. Cody is talking in this first episode that he's needing to write off his original three wives and the kids that he had with them, essentially like someone would write off a business loss or a bad debt or something like, Hey man, I tried to be the golden boy polygamist and I just got a bad batch of family members. So what are you going to do? Thank God for my big boy panties. He pays no mind to the fact that his family members, the wives he married, the kids he sired are actual human beings. And it's never too late until sadly it's too late. He has 17 surviving children, and I do believe that probably all of them would be open to a relationship with him if he pulled his head out of his ass. But that is a big ask and not something he seems to be capable of. And this is why Madison had to set boundaries, and it was the healthiest thing she could do for herself and her children. As always, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel. Check out my second channel, Sarah Spills. A link for that will be in the description of this video. Follow me on Instagram, Threads, X, and TikTok at Reality Squad, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Take care. Have a good one. Much love.